so we are starting module four notes and in module four we're going to be looking at square roots and radicals and that sort of thing okay um, so you have your notes before you and like I said we're going to start out um, and cover part of these notes today and then when I see you next week we'll finish these notes okay um, so um, on the very first problem okay for the most part when you are breaking down a square root um, then if it is a perfect square you are going to get a whole number okay and then the other thing we're going to talk about in this module is if it is not a perfect square and you break that down then how do you break that down without it being a decimal okay but for this very first problem they do ask you to round so you know that they're going to want your answer as a decimal okay um, but that is the only problem okay everything else they do not want decimal answers and again that key word on this first problem is going to be round your answer right to the nearest hundred you know they're going to want that as a decimal all right so we'll talk about um, square roots and that sort of thing as we move into example two all right so if you as you see this triangle here okay what are what comes to your mind what do you know you're going to have to use what formula if you have a triangle pythagorean theorem okay and what is pythagorean theorem what is that formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared Okay, and we know that in Pythagorean theorem, if we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we know that our a and our b are what? Not for this particular problem, but just in general, the a and the b are our legs, right? Okay, of the triangle. And what is c? C is your hypotenuse, okay, which in this case is your x. And how do we know which one is the hypotenuse? Where is the hypotenuse always? <coughs> Across from the 90 degree angle, right? Okay, so here's your 90 degree angle. So you know that your hypotenuse is always across from your 90 degree angle. Okay, so that's your C. And then, every, then your other two legs or your other two sides are your A and your B always going to work that way okay but it doesn't matter which one you plug in for a and which one you plug in for b so now if we plug this in and we have 10 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared all i did was take those two legs 10 and 7 and plug it in so then what do we have what's 10 squared 100 plus 49 equals c squared then what do we have 149 equals c squared now what do we have to do take the square root now put that in your calculator and see what you get again we are wanting a decimal answer on this All right, so look, Marquise let me borrow his calculator, okay? <coughs> when you enter square root of 149, most of your calculators are doing this, okay? <coughs> look at this button right down here. You see those two arrows? If you hit that, it'll change it to a decimal, okay? Right above the enter button, those two arrows right there, okay? We'll make that into a decimal. Now, what does it tell us to round to the nearest hundred? How many places after the decimal is that? Two. So I have 12.206. So what is that going to make that? 12.21. Because that six tells that zero to round up. So this will be 12.21. Okay. And that is your final answer. So C squared is divided by two squared. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
when I write my answer, I have to put equal to C? Well, in your, in Alex, you know, the C's aren't even going to be there. Okay. Or it, actually, it'll be X. Because C is your X, and we're solving for X. So, it, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, our, in our Pythagorean theorem, you're solving for C. But as far as that triangle, the missing side is X. So, in Alex, it would say X equals, and you would just type in 12.2. All right, is everybody with me on number one? Questions on number one? All right, let's look at number two. On number two, we have the square root of 49 over 36. The square root of 49 over 36. Now, first of all, let's recap on what is a perfect square. What is a perfect square? All right, so if you multiply a number times itself, the result is a perfect square, right? So 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 is a perfect square. 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 is a perfect square, right? And the opposite of that would be 2 times 2 is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2, right? Because 2 times 2 equals 4. So just like with 9, the square root of 9 is three because three times three is nine. Everybody follow me on that? So if we have a fraction and we have the square root of 49 over 36, okay, then that is the same as taking the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. That's the same as taking the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So what is the square root of 49? Seven. Seven, very good. And what is the square root of 36? 6. So my final answer is 7 over 6. My final answer is 7 over 6. Alright, questions on number 2. Alright, let's look at number 3. All right, number three says to evaluate the following. Negative square root of 121 and the square root of negative 144, okay? Now, if you take the square root of a negative number, it's not going to be a real number. It's going to be a complex number, an imaginary number. We're not going to deal with that in this class, but you will in college algebra, okay? But... If the negative is on the outside, then you take the square root like normal and then just stick your negative on there, okay? But now here's the good news. Your calculator also knows this, okay? So your calculator will do these for you. Just be very careful and make sure if the negative's on the outside, you enter the negative on the outside. If the negative's on the inside, make sure you enter it on the inside, okay? So let's look here. Alright, so if I do negative square root, oh, sorry. Okay, negative square root of 121, then I get what as my answer? Negative 11. Alright, is everybody with me on that? Because the negative's on the outside and the square root of 121 is 11. Okay. Now, if when I look at that second one, you already know that what's going to happen when I do the square root of negative 144. I've already told you you can't do that, so you already know your answer is going to be not a real number. Okay. But if you forget, if you put in your calculator the square root of negative 144 and hit enter, what does it say? <coughs> domain error. Now, domain error is not your answer, but that should be a big red flashing light saying, hey, this won't work. I know my answer is not a real number. Does that make sense? Okay. So your calculator can be a huge asset to you on this test. Okay. If you know how to use it. Okay. So make sure um, that you're comfortable with that. So this will be not a real number. While we're talking about calculators, I did want to mention that on this test, um, just like all your other tests, you can use your personal scientific calculator or one of the yellow ones provided in the Holiday Learning Center. No graphing calculators, which is what's been the case all year or all semester. But I just want to remind you of that because 
you don't want to forget whatever calculator you're used to using. You want to make sure you have that when you go to take this test for, okay? Um, that you can't use your personal one? Okay, well you can. And it is written in my notes on there. And so if they, um, if that happens, then let, let me know, okay? Um, there has been some confusion in the Holiday Learning Center and I'll leave it at that, okay? Um, but in my notes, it says, in my student notes and in my proctor notes, it says that y'all are allowed to use your personal, now not a graphing one, but you are allowed to use your personal scientific calculator. And on this test, I want you to do that because your calculator may work a little different than the yellow one, and I want you to feel comfortable with the calculator you're used to using, okay? Um, so I actually have to call them today about something else, so I'll touch base again. Um, but I didn't, and I didn't realize that y'all are having any trouble. So do let me know, okay? All right, everybody good? All right, let's look at number four. All right, number four says the square root of V to the 64 power. The square root of V to the 64 power, okay? Now, you may not remember this, okay, but if you have a radical, that can be rewritten as a fractional exponent or vice versa. If you have a fractional exponent, that can be rewritten as a radical. So I do want to remind you that when you do that, it's always power over root, okay? Meaning your exponent's on the top and your root's on the bottom, okay? So essentially all we're doing here is we're rewriting this to be V to the 64 over, what's, if it's a square root, what is that understood to be? A 2. So that's the same as 64 over 2. So really you're just dividing, okay? So whatever your power is, you can divide that by your root. Did you just have an aha moment? Okay. <laughs> I saw her light bulb go ding. All right, so, all right, so um, you, you're essentially just saying your power over your root, okay? So when, you're, when they're wanting you to simplify these, you can just say 64 divided by 2, and what does that give us? 32, and so this is V to the 32 power, and that's your final answer. Now, we're going to see this a lot today, but we're also going to look at some in a little bit where it doesn't divide evenly. Okay, and we're going to talk about how to address that when they do not divide evenly, how to break those down. Okay. Also, in Alex, we don't necessarily have any in our notes, but in Alex, they also ask you to go back and forth, like write your square root with a fractional, I'm sorry, with a fractional exponent, or take a fractional exponent and go back to a radical. So even though you can put these, not, not the variables, but the numbers, you can put those in your calculator. Um, sometimes you still need to be able to, you still need to understand the concept of power over root. Okay? You're not really finding the square root of that. Well, you are. Well, you are. Because the square root, the square root of V to the 64 is V to the 32 power. Because V to the 32 power times V to the 32 power equals you V to the 64. Yes. Because when you multiply, what do you do with your exponents? Add, okay? So you are finding the square root, okay? Does that make sense? All right, questions on number four. All right, let's look at number five. All right, on number five, they've switched gears a little bit, and now we're finding the cube root of eight. The cube root of eight. So, a perfect cube, same concept as a perfect square, except for a perfect square, you're multiplying it times itself. So a perfect cube, you're multiplying it times itself three times, right? Okay, so what number can you multiply times itself three times to get eight? Two, right? Because two times two times two is eight, okay? So we know that two times two times 2 equals 8. So that means that the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay? Now, when we did 
factoring the difference of cubes and we did little parentheses, big parentheses, and then you so same opposite, always positive, remember? I showed y'all how to do a cube root in your calculator, okay? But we can recap on that, okay? So do y'all remember how we do the cube root? You have to type three second, and this button right here that has X and then your radical, and then type in eight, and it'll tell you that it's two. Okay, y'all got that? So you type in your root first, okay? Then do second, and this button right here, then hit enter. Well, it, yeah, you can only see the arrow from where you are, but above it, it has, above it, it has this symbol right here. Which, in other words, you're putting three in for that X is essentially what you're doing. Alright, questions on number five. Questions on number five. Alright, let's look at number six. Alright, now on number six, we've kind of combined both, okay? Taking the square root of numbers and variables, but you're still doing the same thing, okay? So what is the square root of 49? Seven. And then if we're taking the square root of z to the twelfth, what are we doing? Power over root, so it's 12 over 2, and what is 12 over 2? Six, so you know that your final answer is 7z to the 6. 7z to the 6. Everybody with me on that? Alright, now on number 7. We're doing the same thing that we did earlier, but now instead of taking the square root of a fraction, we're taking the fourth root. But it's still the same thing. That still means that you are taking the fourth root of 256 divided by the fourth root of 81. The fourth root of 256 divided by the fourth root of 81. All right, so you can put this in your calculator. Same way we just did a while ago. So you've got 4, 256, and so what goes on top? What's the fourth root of 256? 4 over 3. Okay? Everybody with me? So your final answer on this one is four thirds, four thirds. All right, questions on number seven. Questions on number seven. All right, just like always, um, I would recommend that you keep your notes handy as you work through module four, okay? Because you know that they don't always explain it the same way on Alex, and a lot of times it's a little more confusing just because it, to see it typed out and then like actually hear us talk about it. Um, so I would keep these notes handy for sure, okay? All right, let's look at number eight. Same concept. The fourth root of 256 W to the 20th. Okay, so what is the fourth root of 256? Four. four. And then what are you doing with those exponents? Dub the fourth root of W to the 20th. So power over root, 20 over four. So you're gonna get what? <coughs> w to the fifth. W to the fifth. <coughs> so your final answer is four W to the 
<clears throat> Alright, look at number nine. Now, again, remember power over root. Now, they've asked us to evaluate these, and I'm going to show you how to put them in your calculator, okay? But I do want you to remember that this is the same as the cube root of 8 to the first power, right? Power over root. So 8 to the one third is the same as the cube root of 8, okay? Now, they didn't ask us to rewrite it on, the, on this problem. But remember, you're going to have some problems on Alex where they may give you 8 to the 1 third and ask you to rewrite that in radical form. Or they may give it to you in radical form and ask you to rewrite it with a fractional exponent. Okay? So that's all that means. Okay? Right, well, yeah, your pow your pow it's always power over root. So your power is always your exponent. And your root always goes here. Mm -hmm. All right, but your calculator will actually do these for you, okay? So you can type in 8 and do your little arrow so it'll do your exponent. And then you can type this in as a fraction. 1 over 3 arrow out. And it'll tell you that your answer is 2, which we already know the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, but I'm just showing you how you can put these in your calculator. Everybody with me on that? Same thing again, 625 to the 1 4. And we get what to be our answer? 5. <clears throat> Questions on number nine. Questions on number nine. <clears throat> All right, let's look at number 10. We're doing the same thing again, right? So just to make sure that we understand going back and forth between fractions, um, fractional exponents and radicals, this would be 1 over 27 to the fourth power, and that would be the cube root of that, right? Okay, because that's your power and that's your root. Okay, but there again, your calculator will help you with this. Okay, so you can do parentheses 1 over 27, close your parentheses to the 4 thirds power, and it'll tell you that your answer is what? 1 over 81. Same here, 625 to the negative 3 fourths. Hit enter. And what do you get? 1 over 125. 1 over 125. <coughs> All right, questions on number 10. All right, let's flip it over. All right, on number 11, we have the square root of 20. Is 20 a perfect square? No, and they do not want a decimal answer, okay? So that means they want you to break this down, okay? And in order to do that, then you're going to look for two numbers that multiply to be 20, okay? Here's the kicker, though. One has to be a perfect square and the other one not a perfect square, okay? So, for instance, we know that 2 times 10 is 20, but 2 is not a perfect square and 10 is not a perfect square, so those numbers will not work. You with me? Okay. So we're going to have to use 4 times 5 because 4 is a perfect square and 5 is not. Everybody with me on that? And as your numbers get larger, keep in mind that you want to look for two numbers that multiply to be that number, one a perfect square and one that's not, but you want the largest perfect square, okay? 
And so we'll look at that as we work these. All right, so 20 will break down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. The square root of 4 times the square root of 5 equals the square root of 20, right? So essentially you're just rewriting this, okay? And so, no, so what is the square root of 4? 2. So if you take the square root, the number comes to the outside, and whatever you can't take the square root of, you're going to leave. So your answer is going to be 2 square root of 5. Okay? Now this is what I need you to understand. I need you to understand that all we have done is rewritten the square root of 20 into a different form. Okay? We have not changed the value. Does that make sense? Okay? So when you do these, if you want to double check and make sure they're right, then make sure your two decimal answers match. If I take the square root of 20 and put it in my calculator, and then I do 2 square root of 5 in my calculator, the decimals will match because they are equal to each other. They're equivalent to each other. They just are written differently. Does that make sense? Okay. So, if I do the square root of 20, and see it even will do 2 square root of 5 for you, but you get that decimal... 4.47, blah, 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 okay? And if I do 2 square root of 5 and hit enter, I'm going to get that same decimal, okay? So they're the same thing, okay? Does everybody follow me on that? All right, question. And I know that your calculator will break down the square root of 20 for you like it just did when I entered it. But the problem with that is, is on this test, you've also got cube root, fourth root, fifth root, and your calculator will not break those down for you, okay? So that's why I'm showing you the steps on how to do it, because if you just rely on your calculator to do those square roots, and you go, oh, well, it'll do it for me, then when you get to cube root, fourth root, fifth root, you're gonna be up a creek without a paddle, okay? Go with me, I know it's a little southern phrase, but you, you, you get my drift, okay? So you got to make sure you understand the concepts behind how to do that, okay? All right, let's look at number 12. You've got a number and you've got a variable, but don't let that confuse you. It's still the con same concept. Break down your square root of 32, break down your u to the 16th, and then combine those together, okay? So what is the square root of 32? How do we break that down? Okay. 8 and 4 will break down. Okay. And 4 is a perfect square. But remember we want the largest perfect square. So what do you notice about 8? It'll also break down into 4 and 2, right? So then that means you know that 4 is not your largest perfect square that will divide into 32. Okay. So then what... What do you think might work? And you could do 4 and 8. You would just have to break it down again. Okay. What about 16 and 2? 16 and 2. Okay. So 16 times 2 gives us 32. What is the square root of 16? 4. 4. Times the square root of 2. Alright, and then what about your variables? If I have u to the 16th and I'm taking the square root, then power over root, I have 16 over 2, so that gives us what? u to the 8th, right? So that means I have 4 u to the 8th on the outside and the square root of 2 on the inside. I have 4 u to the 8 on the outside and the square root of 2 on the inside. Everybody with me on that? Alright, questions on number 12. Questions on number 12. Alright, now let's look at
look at 13. You have u to the 15th, the square root of u to the 15th. So that would be power over root. That would be 15 over 2. But what's the problem? 2 will not go into 15 evenly, right? Okay. So when, it, when you do power over root and it does not divide evenly, then you have to break it down the same way we've been breaking down our numbers. Okay. But listen to me on this. So you're breaking this down into two things that, remember your exponents have to add to be 15, right? But in your first radical, you want the most you can put in there that will be divisible by 2 because you're doing the square root, right? So if I have 15, I can break that down into 14 and 1. You with me? Because 14 plus 1 is 15, but 14 is divisible by 2 with a remainder of 1, okay? So I'm going to put u to the 14th in the first radical and just u in the second radical. And again, multiply those together, add your exponents. That's the same as u to the 15th. like what you've normally been doing. Power over root. What is 14 over 2? 7. So this will be u to the 7th. And then what about your second radical? What have we been doing? Whatever's under the second radical, we just bring it down, right? Or bring it over. So your final answer is u to the 7th square root of times square root of u. Okay. And we're going to look at another one in 14 that's similar to this. Okay. But again, how you break it down all depends on what your root is. So we won't get to these today, but we will next time. And you'll break those down into, you know, depending on your root. Okay, so if it's fourth root, you want it to be divisible by four. If it's fifth root, you want it to be divisible by five. Okay? All right, so let's look at 14, and then we're going to stop for today, okay, um, so that you have time to work on what you need to work on, okay? All right, so let's look at 14. Very similar, same concept, but we've also got that four in there. But we know that the square root of four is two. Okay, so you know you're going to have a, <clears throat> you know you have the square root of 4 equals 2. And then you have v to the 13th. How are we going to break that down? 12 and 1. Very good. Because 12 plus 1 is 13 and 12 is divisible by 2. So then that gives me what? v to the 6th square root of v. And don't forget we have this 2 here as well. So then my final answer is what? 2v to the 6th square root of v. 2v to the 6th square root of v. So remember, any time you take the square root, the radical goes away. So when I took that square root of 4, the radical goes away, just leaving you with 2. And when I said square root of v to the 12th and got v to the 6th, now both of those are on the outside. 2 and v to the 6th are both on the outside. So then they came together to be on the outside. Square root of v stays on the, or v stays underneath the square root. Okay? So whatever's not, you need to work out on the base of the bar. Yeah, or you work on the Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. If you can take the square root of it, it comes out. If you can't, it stays in. Okay? Alright, everybody good? Alright, we are going to start number 15 um, next time. Okay? Um, I think that will just be the, the best thing to do. Um, and then that way you'll have time to work on whatever you need to work on today. Okay? All right. <coughs>